So we are going to talk about the product of upper triangular matrices. Now we say that a matrix is upper triangular if all of the entries below the diagonal are zero. So in this case, all of the non-zero entries are on the diagonal and above, which creates this little triangle in the top right that contains all of the non-zero entries. Now the way that we can formalize this is in terms of the rows and the columns of the matrices. We can see that the diagonal is the collection of entries in the matrix where the row and the column are at the same index. So this top diagonal position is the first row in the first column. This one is the second row in the second column. This is the third row in the third column and so on. So the entries that occur below the diagonal are going to have a row value that's greater than the column value. For example, in this case, this is the second row but the first column. This is the third row but the first column and so on. So when we have a greater row value, we're moving down the matrix. And so when the row value is greater than the column value, we're going to be looking at an entry that is below the diagonal. And so a upper triangular matrix is characterized by the fact that if the row is greater than the column, then the entry at that position in the matrix is zero. Now our goal will be to prove that if we have two different matrices, A and B, that both have this upper triangular form, then the resulting matrix AB will also be upper triangular. And furthermore, we can prove that the diagonal entries of this product AB can be obtained simply by multiplying the diagonal entries of A and B respectively. So for example, if we want to find this top left entry in the product AB, where A and B are both upper triangular, all we have to do is multiply this top left entry for A times the top left entry for B. And that will give us the result for the product. So our goal will be to prove that this product is upper triangular. The first way we can approach that is using the explicit formula for matrix multiplication. If we have this product AB, and we want to find what is the entry in this product at row R and column C. The way that we do that is we take the sum from I equals one to N of A, R, I, B, I, C. So in this case, we're looking at square matrices and N is just the size of the matrix. So it's how many rows or how many columns each matrix has. If we're looking for the entry R, C, row R and column C in this product, then we take this sum where we keep the row fixed for A, we keep the column fixed for B, and then we move down the columns for A and down the rows for B. So if we're looking at this example, let's say we want to find the top left entry of this product. In that case, we're looking for row one and column one. So we're going to be looking at all the entries in row one of A and all the entries in column one of B, which means for A, we'll start with I equals one will be A11 and then B11, which is just these two top left entries. That's A times E. And then after that, the next term in the sum will be I equals two. So we'll get A12, meaning row one and column two. So that's B here. And then BIC, which is row two, column one. That's the G. So this entry will be AE plus BG. And so one way you might have been taught to compute this in school is that you start at these two spots on each matrix and then on the first matrix you march to the right and on the second matrix you march downward. So in this case we start at AE and then if we move one over then we move to B on the first matrix and G on the second matrix so that's how we get the second term. Using this formula we can prove the result we're interested in for upper triangular matrices using this definition right here of what an upper triangular matrix is. So our goal is to prove that the product AB is upper triangular, which means that it has to satisfy this definition. So if we're looking at a row R and a column C of this product where R is greater than C, then that entry in this product has to equal zero. Or in other words, since this is the equation for that matrix entry in the product, if R is greater than C, then this sum right here needs to equal zero. That's what we want to prove. Now it turns out that this sum equals zero because each of the individual terms, these A, R, I, B, I, C, will all be zero as long as R is greater than C. 
And to understand why that's true, let's think about what it would take for this product to be non-zero. Remember that A and B are both upper triangular, which means that they satisfy this condition right here. So we want A sub Ri to be non-zero because we want the product to be non-zero. We know that if R is greater than I, A is upper triangular, that means that A sub Ri will equal zero. So if we want this to be non-zero, we need R to be less than or equal to I. And the same thing is true with B. B is also upper triangular. So if I is greater than C, then because of this definition, B sub IC will equal zero. So we also need to have I less than or equal to C. Both of these are necessary in order for this product to be non-zero. But here's the thing, if R is less than or equal to I, and I is less than or equal to C, well, by the transitive property, we're going to get R is less than or equal to C. And what that means is, if any of these terms is non-zero, we must have R is less than or equal to C. Put another way, if R is greater than C, this will always be zero. And that's exactly the statement we're trying to prove. If R is greater than C, then this sum equals zero, so that matrix entry in the product equals zero. And therefore we've proved that the product of two upper triangular matrices is upper triangular. Now there's one more thing I wanna look at, which is what are the diagonal entries of this matrix product? For that, we're looking at the entries where the row and the column are at the same index. So we're just going to take C equals R. In other words, the column number is the same as the row number. And so we can go into this formula and just substitute in R anywhere that we had a C previously. So this will be the formula for the diagonal entries of our matrix product. So we wanna ask, how can we compute those in a straightforward way? Well, we just did a little bit of work for how we get the non-zero terms in these sums when A and B are upper triangular. So we can go down here and replace C with R to see what we get. Now recall from before that because A is upper triangular, if the row index is greater than the column index, this term will be zero. So in order for this to be non-zero, we need R less than or equal to I. And the same thing applies for B. This time, instead of looking at the column C, we have C equals R. So we need the row to be less than or equal to the column, which means I is less than or equal to R. Now, if we look at these two inequalities together, we have that I is bigger than R, and we also have that I is smaller than R. So the only way for those two equations to be satisfied at the same time is that we have I equals R. In other words, the only non-zero term in this sum when we're looking at the diagonal is the exact term I equals R. And so this is simply going to equal A sub RR, B sub RR. And if we look at this, A sub RR, well that's the diagonal entry of the matrix A at the row index and column index R. And the same is true for B sub RR. So what we found is the diagonal entries of this matrix product when A and B are upper triangular is just the product of those diagonal entries for each of the individual matrices. So now we know that the product of two upper triangular matrices is also upper triangular, and we know that the diagonal entries of that product are just the products of the diagonal entries of each of those factor matrices. And the way that we got that was just using the explicit formula for the matrix product along with this definition of A being upper triangular. From there, we can take a look at the sum and ask, what does it take for these terms to be non-zero? And then we realize that these are always going to be zero whenever the row is greater than the column, which gives us exactly the result that we need.